So I just played through Super String, which is a relatively new mobile RPG released by Fractorial Games, which is since 2021 at least, a subsidiary to Pearl Abyss, which if you're not aware of, one of the developers of Black Desert. Now, when I first saw Super String, I thought, oh hey, another interesting mobile RPG, and that was that, realistically. I downloaded it, and given that I live in Australia, it took forever to download. Probably around a year and six months, give or take a year. Okay, it didn't take that long, but yeah, longer than it should have. Now, once I actually got into the game, I was splendidly surprised with the graphics, the animations, the game just looked amazing. And the fact that it actually had some pretty decent cutscenes with violence, action, and some nice special effects, fully voice acted by the way, and not cheesy at all, it was just beautiful. Granted, things often do go downhill from here. Nevertheless, I had high hopes that Super String would keep this sort of high momentum and quality. And well, yeah, it actually did. But before I get into all of that, can I just like mention that I'm kind of surprised that this game is based around, and forgive me if I'm butchering the pronunciation, Manhua? Like, I had no idea when I got into this game, it's only after I played it, when I was Googling around for who published it and released this beautiful game, that I noticed this fact. The game pulls characters from different manhwa through the super string theory. This is exactly the reason that the characters can be present in this game even though they're from different dimensions. So yeah, I was sort of surprised by this. It's kind of really unique for mobile RPGs to sort of take this route, and it's really quite awesome. It's like a Korean Justice League or Avengers, with just like less shirts and more waifus. <laughs> anyway, let's just jump back into the actual game features. I just thought I should mention that before we get any further, because I was surprised by it. Now to start, I would like to mention that the story is basically us trying to save humanity from ending. So realistically, not much different to our current reality of 2022. However, they're fighting zombies and they've got superpowers and epic outfit choices, we have masks. Which I guess could be an awesome style choice, but I digress. Super String is at its core a hero collector gacha game, albeit a refreshingly fun and interesting one, but one nevertheless. You start off with a basic assortment of characters that can be upgraded through recasting, and of course, equipping them with a plethora of gear. Recasting can be done once the required amount of souls are acquired. Depending on the rarity of the character, the more souls it will cost. For gear, you can collect them from completing varied levels or dungeons, however, depending on the location of the equipment, it can add extra effects. So it adds more depth to the gearing system than just simply equipping a shirt, pants, and boots, which can be a nice change. Although if you're unsure of what's best, there's always the trusty auto-equip button. A very helpful feature when starting. Now, leveling up one's characters is also just as important as gearing up, and so is recasting, so do keep that in mind when you're picking what characters you would like to use. You don't want to be wasting resources on characters that are not necessary. Besides gearing up your characters, there's also collecting them! And in Super String, you will need more than what most Ganta games require, because as you continue through the campaign of Super String, you'll unlock teams. These teams can have up to four characters within them with you having access to three teams in total, which can be deployed on the campaign map to assist you, as each team has three operational points. But I will get to the use of that in a moment. So to sort of summarize, you'll need at least 12 characters in total to be semi-competent and efficient within Super String, which isn't a bad thing, don't get me wrong, I quite liked it. It just means I get to use more of the characters within the game, but it also requires more equipment, more souls, it's just a lot. Now regarding the campaign map and combat, the SART Super String uses a turn-based combat system. However, this is determined via speed, so depending on the right buffs, one could potentially have several turns in one row. And you can see the active order at any given time at the bottom of the screen. Also, like with most of these titles, yes, the combat is automated. However, it's very cinematic and very fluid. But besides the automated combat, each character has a total of four skills, some being bolstering buffs, others being attacked, although you only gain access to some of those skills once a character has been fully recasted or fully upgraded, so to speak. So do keep that in mind when upgrading your characters. Now, in regards to the campaign map itself, once you start your mission, you'll be placed upon the campaign map, with each team having three operational points. 
When these operational points get extinguished by either fighting or accessing points of interest or gaining map and story related info, it can no longer move until you replenish it. These points can be replenished by reaching an outpost. So in essence, you have to move your teams carefully as each battle takes an operational point. And if all of the teams that you've loaded in run out of operational points, the campaign map is basically over and you have to start from the beginning again. Keep in mind the monsters do respawn on the map and can block you from making it to the boss, for instance. So planning is really required to make sure that you don't have to repeat the levels over and over again. I personally really enjoyed this feature. It makes you have to plan out your routes and choose what battles you want to actually participate in instead of just rushing ahead, tackling everything without really caring about what you're doing. So to really summarize my experience playing through a super string, I have to say, whilst it does generally use a formula we're relatively familiar with in mobile turn-based RBG genres, it's also different. The game feels polished and smooth with voiced over cutscenes that keep you invested to the story and fun combat, strategic elements. It's just really quite nice to have this all in one basket. Albeit the game is a little difficult in regards to the bosses, because the monsters themselves were relatively weak, but the bosses are overpowered. Nevertheless, I do hope this game managed to stick around for the long haul because it's actually pretty good and I can't wait to get more waifus. There's just so many to collect. It's just mwah. Someday soon I'm gonna make it. Yeah. Our hard work's gonna be worth it.